Hello everyone, this is Trafalgar Valentine. How is it going today? Today I'm going to have the vehicle drawn, but instead of actually doing the body today, I'm going to do the inside. Now, drawing the inside of a machine, although you won't really see it unless it's actually necessary when you want to design a machine, but it's good to actually understand the major components that's there. So if you want to actually adjust the vehicle for a certain environment or modify it, you know certain parts are actually to modify. So this is going to be a 1960 Dodge major s s chassis system. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to do like an engine block. And once again, I've got my um, negative light, just because I like the effect that it has. Okay, so for the main block, it's going to be a, just a square shape for now. And I think I'll have the brakes here, here, and here, here. It's a, just a rough outline for now. I'll go into a lot more detail with the pen and ink and stuff. Then we need the transmission system, which is going from the engine to the gearbox. So from there, here's the gearbox which comes down and you have your gear stick coming up which changes the gears from the drive shaft which will come down here then it gets split off to the rear axle just do some connections for the main front wheels if it was four-wheel drive, it would have drive trains as well at the front, but just because it's a 1960 Dodge, it doesn't. Anywho, uh, which is a component, so we could also have the steering wheel up here, like so, and uh, the steering linkage would go there. I'm just doing these small squares just above. This is where the bodywork will sit on top of the actual uh, the suspension. So for here, well, from suspension will come down like so, and then this one's going to be a leaf suspension. So I'm just going to do a straight line for now. This is approximately like an A5 size picture on an A4 bit of paper. Okay, and then the chassis will come down, up there, across, up, like so. Right, now I've got some of the more basic components in. Um, I'll zoom in just so you can see some more better detail. I've just noticed it's quite small. One second. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So, for where should we start? Okay. So these would be front drum brakes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline this in stippelin instead of actually shall I do stippelin? Yeah I'll outline this in stippelin just so you can see a little bit better. So for the brakes do, 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 do. come round here. These are drums, so it's like small cylinder chunk there okay we'll do the steering linkage here this comes down in, <coughs> excuse me has a rod coming down here joins there Okay, so this more detail on the engine as well. So we've got the main Hemi engine here. The circular disc as well on top, quite thick disc, is the air filter coming down. This is a V8 shape. So I'm going to go up there and down.
And we've got the carburetor systems with the camshafts and things here. I'm going to use a ruler for this just to make sure we've got straight lines. Okay. Like so. Modern day cars, you can't usually see a lot of this is all boxed in and stuff. Stop you actually from fixing it. Just so it encourages you to actually go to the dealership garage to actually for them to actually fix it for you. Back in the day, these cars and stuff, they actually came with the toolbox in the actual car. So you could fix it yourself whenever you wanted. And that was a really handy idea. Never mind. Um, okay, steering linkage comes on the front here. Like so. Just erase some of these lines. Just make it a bit clearer. So, okay, now we need a, what do you call it, a drive belt, I think. What this does is it comes from, it's basically the front part of the drive shaft, but it powers a belt, and this basically powers all the other pumps and systems that go around the actual engine. So your water pump, your oil pump, you might have hydraulics as well. And this is run by a belt. This is a very important component of the car. I don't know if you've ever not had an incident where the belt is actually snapped. And because it's all timed perfectly to run smoothly, and if this snaps basically, well, timing's basically gone and the car's basically knackered. Because you would have to get a new engine for it. Never mind. Okay. Um, let's do. Let's actually, I might do the chassis. With straight lines and then have some of the components still in stippling. That comes across like that. I'll measure this here just to make sure we're getting the parallel lines. Now you can tell I didn't quite measure this bit here correctly just because. Uh, well, if you look at the parallel lines, the stippling. Do, 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 do. You know, I thought it would be a fun idea to actually do stippling for an outline instead. I'm using quite a thick pen for it. But I'm just trying to speed it up and, well, I forgot how time consuming stippling was. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's a chassis bit at the front. Then there's a strip bar there chassis is the main main bulk of the body main bulk of the body just because it's like the frame that it sits on so it's like the skeleton so if it's so the skeleton would be like our chassis basically 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 okay then so we've got the steering linkage here, the brakes here, this is the chassis coming down, then we've got the timing belt which is coming around here, then you've got the small circular discs here, then this bit of the, is the steering linkage on the front, you have the V8 engine shape here, it's shaped like a V8, well it's called a V8 because it's got 8 pistons, 4 on each side. That provide the main power. You've got the air filter on top. Got the main carburetor with the carbon shafts down here. Okay. Then we'll have the steering wheel coming up here. Do 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 do. do. Don't make steering wheels like they used to. This one sticks out quite a lot. I'm just using from the reference photo. The reference photo that I've got is actually comes from a sales magazine describing what comes inside the Dodge from the 60s. That's quite handy. Okay, following the engine down. Let's do 
a cylinder shape here. I'm not quite sure it would be. It could be an alternator, it could be the starter motor, the oil pan. I'm not quite sure. There we are. Okay, now for the transmission system. Like I said, the transmission system is the part that the part that travels from the engine to the gearbox. We have a flywheel in between, which is like a brace basically for high pressure. I remember working in a mechanics garage and trying to fit a gearbox, it is not easy. I used to fit them in bands and it took I think about five of us just to lift it up and oh it was awkward. Because you have to have five people lift it all at once. And then for someone to actually try and screw it in and stuff, we, the jack was broken or something, I think, at the time. And oh, this is a nightmare. Okay, so the gearbox is coming around here. So this would be all underneath the car. And this is where the floor will be. The seat will come there. Now for the drivetrain system. This is basically. Drivetrain? Prop shaft. So that's the correct terminology for it. Prop shaft coming down here. This is basically spins at a high speed and comes into this back box here, which turns two cogs either side of it, which then power the rear wheels. Like so. Okay. And do more of the sashi section. <coughs> Chassis section come down and we have some fuel lines fuel lines no could be lines for the brake fluid or the handbrake come down there So, okay, what I'll do is I'll finish up this side and then I'll do the other side in time lapse just because this is taking a lot, bit longer than I thought it would. Okay, do, 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 do. What should I do next? Chassis comes down here, the main skeleton of the car. And then the bodywork would sit on the suspension which is attached to the chassis and the chassis would take the force of the weight and the chassis would absorb the uh, chassis the suspension would absorb the impact and the body would move accordingly to actually balance it out move accordingly move well the suspension would be absorb the impact of the road and stuff Like so, there's got a, another section here. Modern day cars, it's all be a lot more different. I just like doing these old fashioned cars because interesting and it's different than the modern day ones. You don't see these anymore and stuff. Modern day ones are a lot more light framed and stuff to save weight and things, save fuel and economy and strength and all those other sections. I did watch this um, interesting clip one time of where the Demonstrated a car from the 60s, crashed it into a wall, it was annihilated. They did it with a modern day car and it showed the, how much the safety features have actually improved. It's, it's quite fascinating actually, I mean, it's quite scary to think people actually drove cars like that in the 60s. I mean, when it hit the wall it just went, well, basically just turned almost into a, like a metal pancake. But, but the safety one, the airbags and everything like that, and all the passengers were safe. Okay, so we've got the rear drums here. The drums hold, has like a spinning disc inside of it and then it has two brakes either side of it that lock into it, that slow the metal disc down, which slows the car down. Remember I had to adjust the uh, handbrake sometimes, you do it inside the actual drum, there will be a little hole and then you have to just get a little key and tinker it up and down. Okay, this would be leaf springs, this is like a set of metal plates overlapping each other um, going from smaller to larger to larger to larger and this basically acts like a spring this is on the back of the car, leaf springs 
but you also have hydraulic suspension as well which can lift up and down which is what you see more commonly in buses and stuff so plate there another one there another one there and this is connected at the end there okay it's looking good so far and the rear of the chassis comes round join these up so rod coming up there Okay, that's looking good. Do, 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 do. Right, what I think I'll do is I've got the main components I wanted to actually show you in the drawing. I haven't finished off this section off yet, just because I've already described it there, so I'll do this with a bit in time lapse. One moment, please. Okay guys, this is just about all finished now. So I've just gone over the shading of the outside of the actual car as well. So just to highlight it a bit better. But yeah, we've still got the major components of the car. As you can see, I've darkened the chassis as well to make it easier to see. So yeah, just remember, um, when you draw a vehicle and stuff like that, these are the components that's going to be inside. Obviously, different components obviously for different vehicles, but it's a generalised same kind of principle, no matter what vehicle it is. You have to have the main brake systems, the main suspension, be it hydraulics, leaf, shock absorbers, the drivetrain for the drive wheels, the prop shaft, gearbox, transmission, the engine block, the timing belt, steering linkage, for the steering wheel there, and the air filter on top. Other features such as the oil filter, alternator, I've also got the fuel lines here running down again. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, sorry it was a bit spontaneous, but that's just the way I like to draw. And if you'd like to have a look at my Etsy shop or my Facebook and stuff, the links are all in the description, you know the biz. And I'll be back with another video. I love drawing these vehicles and I want to do some more. See you later.